It's Kelly Marie Alvarez from Blonde Fawn here with a video for Simon Says Stamp. And today we are so thrilled to be announcing our Happy Hug stamp set and its coordinating dies. I love this set so much. It's so cute and sweet. And it has a really awesome reveal wheel thought bubble add on that's perfect to go with it. So we have the dies for the reveal wheel and also the templates to help you line up with the stamping. And we're going to be showing you how to do that in the video. And of course, that puzzle piece is going to fit perfectly in your reveal wheel dies. And then, of course, in the stamp set, we have a little coordinating die that's going to help you use the stamp set with that same reveal wheel add-on and we'll show you that in a little bit later too. We also have this super cute thought bubble stencil that we'll be showing you today too. It has a lot of different sizes of thought bubble and one of them lines up with the stamp set too. So first up we're going to check out this adorable stamp set. This first image is my very favorite from the stamp set and it has a cute little bunny and fox hugging. We have two little mice hugging and birds hugging. We also have them in a smaller size too that's perfect for that thought bubble in the stamp set. We have a bird on his own that can be thinking about sending hugs to his friend. These cute little squirrels hugging, kind of seeing them from the back. And then this little single squirrel that can also be using the thought bubble. We have the thought bubble in the stamp set and a cute heart too. And then we have really cool things that can go in the thought bubble. And we're gonna show you how to use this with the reveal wheel, but we have three different U's so that you can do thinking of you and the U fonts change as you spin the wheel. And we also of course have the thinking of you sentiment. And the rest of the sentiments in this set are the best. We have sending happy thoughts your way. We have remember hugs. We have I miss your hugs. I miss you. We also have I can't stop thinking of you, which is super cute with the reveal wheel. I'm here for you and can't wait to hug you. So next up, we're gonna add some color to these adorable images, and we're going to be using Copic markers to color these guys in. And I love this set so much for multiple reasons. One, it's perfect for the times we're living in right now because don't you just miss hugs, right? You wanna send someone, hey, I miss your hugs. But I love that this set is, of course, great year round. So to a friend that's far away, I love being able to write something like, I miss your hugs. The other thing I love about the stamp set is a lot of these characters may look familiar, and that's on purpose. Like this fox and the bunny that I'm coloring in right now, now, this bunny and fox appear in a lot of different sets, including our Butterfly Kisses stamp set, so you can mix and match them. We have a really great stamp set we're showing you tomorrow called Scootin' By, and it has two characters that work perfectly with these two hugging critters, and we're going to be showing you a really cool way to use that with an interactive card. Next up, I'm going to be coloring in the mice, and of course the mice might seem familiar because we have lots of cute mice sets, so you're going to be able to mix and match those guys together along with our birds and our squirrels too. Now one of the other ways that I love to use this stamp set is for thinking of you cards. So there's not the only the I miss your hugs kind of feel of it, but there's also the thinking of you and just showing someone that you might be thinking of them during a hard time. This is a really sweet card to be able to send to them. Here you've seen how I've been adding my Copic marker colors. I always like to use my lightest marker to kind of help me know where I want to put my shadows. It's kind of like a test before I have to fully commit to the dark marker. So I put my lighter marker on there, kind of decide, oh, okay, I like that. Then I go ahead with my darker marker like I am now, and then I start blending it out medium and then to light. And that's my favorite way to do it because it really helps me decide how I want these characters to look. I really like coloring in these birds because I feel like you can use lots of different colors because birds come in all sorts of different colors. So here I had yellow and now I'm gonna do some blue and that can kind of change depending on the look I want for my card or maybe what pattern papers I'm using. I also love to give them little white bellies. A lot of people in our design team do that. They kind of use the marker, make a little kind of half circle there for their belly, leave that part white and then blend out the rest like normal and I think it looks so cute and sweet. So I did that for the two little tiny birds there and and I think one day I'm gonna try it for the bigger bird too. I particularly love these squirrels and kind of seeing them from behind. I think it's so sweet. It kind of reminds me of the Upon a Star stamps that we have too, where you can kind of see the characters from behind. I just love it. And I'm using some E40 markers here. And I'm kind of relatively new to these markers. I didn't used to have them, so I, I kind of always forget to use them. And I'm finally starting to use them more and more. And I think these three colors blend together so nicely and they look so great for critters, especially like squirrels and bears and things like that. I really, really like those. And then here I'm gonna add that same color so it's going to look like that squirrel is kind of thinking of hugging his friend which I think is so sweet. 
One thing I always like to do is add some color to things like thought bubbles or clouds. And my favorite way to do that is with either blue or grays. And I tend to go towards the blues because I just think they're so pretty. So you can see here, I'm just kind of outlining right along the black stamp line and then just kind of blending it out with my colorless blender. So I'm doing kind of a darker one, a lighter one, and then blending it out. And I think it looks so nice. These are the coordinating dies, which you can bend apart at the tabs or use your wire snips to separate. We're gonna line them up with our stamped images, hold them in place with some low tack tape, run them through the die cut machine, and we're gonna have these perfectly cut out images. And oh my gosh, how sweet are these guys? I am just in love with these hugging critters so much. There are lots of different ways to mix and match the elements from this set. So you can see you can have that cute little bird thinking of the other two birds hugging, which I think is so cute and sweet. You can also do things like you can layer and stamp in some of those stamp sets like that. And so you could kind of cut off part of the squirrels and you would just see part of them hugging. Here's an example of that butterfly kisses bunny and how cute it would be to have him thinking of those other characters hugging. And also here is our bubbles of joy. Now we have lots of stamp sets with these cute little mice doing different things, but those mice are a perfect match. So that guy can be thinking of the little mice hugging. So it's such a great way to kind of bring a new idea to stamp sets that you may have. Now there's this other cute little coordinating die included and it's gonna cut out the center of that thought bubble. So I'm just gonna hold that in place. I'm lining it up with the interior of that black line. And then we're gonna go ahead and have that all cut out. And now we have that open center. Now you could just use this with that open center, but that's also gonna help it use it with that reveal wheel add-on that I showed you at the beginning. So there you can see how you can kind of layer the cute little critters inside. Or maybe layer something like a heart or a sentiment inside of that thought bubble too. And then here is that reveal wheel thought bubble add-on. So you can take that piece there, pop it right into the puzzle piece opening of the reveal wheel, and then we're gonna run that through the die cut machine and we're going to have our reveal wheel panel with the thought bubble cut out of it. Here you can see we have the two die cuts that the reveal wheel thought bubble add-on die comes with. And then we have that stamped thought bubble that we just cut out earlier. And all of them are gonna work with this reveal wheel. So there you can see how cute there is a thinner version, a thicker version that has some really cute stitching that you can layer over that reveal wheel opening. And then of course we have that stamped version that we just showed how to cut it open with the die that we have in the coordinating die and you can layer that right over that reveal wheel thought bubble. Now the other thing I love about these pieces is you can actually use them on a card without the reveal wheel too. So those little thought bubbles are absolutely adorable either with the reveal wheel or without. And then of course we have these templates to help you with stamping on the wheel and the reveal wheel. And we're gonna be showing you how to do this as we create a card later in the video. Last product we're going to be showing you today is our Thought Bubble Stencil. And this stencil is so cute and fun. It has all these different Thought Bubble sizes and then different trails going in different directions depending on how you want to style your card. So we're gonna go ahead and ink up this cool stencil to show you all of the different Thought Bubbles in it. So when I like to use this stencil, what I do is I like to take post-it notes and just cover up the other pieces just so I don't accidentally ink them since I'm not very careful. And here we have Rebecca demonstrating our inking here. So thank you so much, Rebecca, for putting this together. So she's gonna go ahead and use those post-it notes and just block off any of the areas that she doesn't want to add inking to. Then next up, she's going to add color to that thought bubble. And we're gonna be using some merman ink here. It's really fun to either do darker or lighter thought bubbles or also do them in grays or just crazy colors too. And we're gonna do a rainbow version later on in this card. But here's kind of a lighter version where the ink color is a little heavier to the outside edges and then it just kind of fades into nothing on the inside and it looks really, really cool. I really love it. And you can see as we pull up the stencil, I mean, how pretty is that? The other thing I love about these thought bubbles is they kind of look like really cool, very puffy, clouds too. So you could use these as thought bubbles and as clouds. There you can see there's the two different trails going in the two different directions. So you can use them however you like. You can also ink the trail separately from the cloud um, so that the trail's just in a different position. That all depends on how you want to put your critter there or how you want to line everything up. You can kind of move that trail around or you can ink them all at once like we've done here. So here is the next size down of the thought bubble and you can see how cute this one is. In this one we inked it a lot with a lot heavier color inking the full inside of it. So it's just two different ways to do it. And then here you can see the other trail going in the opposite direction. So now we're going to ink up that thought bubble and you can see we've blocked off all of the trails now. So we're just gonna ink up the thought bubble on its own. Then we're gonna move on to the trail in the other direction. And that's just what I was just talking about, how you can kind of play around with the stencil and decide, ooh, 
it looks nicest. I don't know the trail going this way, that way, in what position. We found kind of the perfect placement that we wanted. We can kind of mask off everything with some post-it notes and then just add some ink to that bubble trail. And now we've got a trail going in opposite direction and coming off of the bubble in a different way, just depending on what you're looking for. So there is a third size of thought bubble here, and this one's really, really cute. The other thing I like to do with these thought bubbles is turn them in different directions, so you can kind of flip them over and have them go in different directions for different looks. And then the last thought bubble is one of my favorites. So you can use it on its own, like we've done here, so it's just kind of a tiny little thought bubble, but it's also designed to be the exact size of the thought bubble in the stamp set. So it's a quick and easy way to color it in, kind of like how we had done in the bubble stencil. So you can go ahead and stamp that cute thought bubble from the stamp set, line up the stencil with it, and then easily ink it and color it in instead of trying to color it with markers. So it's really fun and quick and easy. And of course, there's a trail that lines up perfectly with the trail in the stamp set too. So we're just gonna line that up and ink in the little bubble part of the trail too. And you'll see just how cute this is when we lift up the stencil, it's completely colored in. Here we did it a little bit darker, you could do it lighter or use different colors. It's just so much fun and so cool. And I can't wait for you guys to see Shari's rainbow stencil card towards the end of this video. But first up, we're going to be creating a card with the peekaboo backdrop and this happy hug stamp set, and it is so much fun. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do some creative masking here. So I've got my happy hug stamp set, and we're gonna stamp out that super cute thought bubble. But I want some of the characters to be masked off in the thought bubble. So I'm gonna stamp out two thought bubbles, and then I'm going to stamp another thought bubble on this full stick post-it. So this is a post-it that the entire back is that post-it stickiness. Then I'm just gonna peel that up and take some scissors and we're gonna cut around that bottom black edge. And I'm gonna cut kind of like right in the middle of the black line. That's kind of how I try to see it in my head. I always put on my reading glasses so I can actually see it. And then I'm just gonna cut around those lines. So you'll see they're kind of right in the middle of that black line. Now I really only need to cut out the bottom of the thought bubble cause that's gonna be where the critters are going to overlap. So as I get to this edge here, you're gonna see I'm just gonna go towards the top of the post-it and just kind of cut the rest of that off so that it's not in my way. Next, we're gonna take this mask and line it up with the bottom of the thought bubble. And once again, I kind of think about lining it up with the middle of the black line. So we're just gonna stick that right down onto our piece of cardstock here, and then we can do some stamping, and you're gonna see how cute this turns out. So first up, we're gonna stamp the cute little hugging birds from the set. I'm inking them up in some jet black ink, so it's gonna be nice and perfect for my alcohol marker coloring, and we're gonna stamp there. And you'll see as we peel off the mask, which is my favorite part, you'll see that now we've perfectly perfectly masked off those cute little birds inside the thought bubble. We're gonna repeat the same idea with the second bubble. So I'm gonna line up that same mask. I can use it over and over again since it's out of that post-it. And then we're gonna stamp the little squirrels. And in this case, we're actually cutting off more of the squirrels since it's a bigger image. And I think it looks really, really cool when you peel up that awesome little post-it there. I mean, how great is that look? Now I'm gonna take this mask and I'm actually just gonna store it right on my stamp set. Anytime I create a mask, I just stick it right to the back. And now I always have it there for when I wanna make another card with this technique. We went ahead and colored these and die cut them. And I wanted to show you, these of course were masked with that technique, but I wanted to show you, you can also do the same idea with die cuts. So there's that little thought bubble that we cut out at the beginning of the video. I can actually just layer my characters inside. So I'm adding a little tape runner to the bottom edge and I'm gonna layer those squirrels in just like we did with the masking, but this time we're going to use die cuts. And we're just gonna cut off any of the excess of the squirrels and you'll see that this looks really cute too. So I love that both the masking and the die cutting works it just kind of depends on what look you're going for now that is the die cut and stamped version of the bubble we also have those cute little thought bubbles that come with the reveal wheel add-on and I can layer these guys and those thought bubbles too so I love that you can easily mix and match these so to create the scene for the card, we're going to be using the cloudy stencil, I think my favorite stencil of all time, some merman ink, also my favorite ink of all time, and we're going to be inking up on a piece of cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half. And so I'm really building up the color. I want the clouds to be nice and bold. And today we're recreating a card by Elena. So thank you, Elena, for making this gorgeous card. I love it so much. Once the color is kind of that nice bold color that I like, I'm gonna remove the stencil, I'm gonna turn it, 
and then kind of line it up, see where I want the clouds to look and ink it again. I always start on the stencil and move my way up to the next cloud. So you can see how cool that looks already. So we're gonna turn it again, kind of find perfect placement, and then we're gonna start inking. And we're gonna continue this all the way down the card. And what I love about these clouds is there's no right or wrong way to do them. You can turn them, use them different ways. You can even flip the stencil over too, which is really cool. You can have them at an angle. However you want your clouds to look, it's gonna look amazing. So I'm gonna keep building up this color. And as I get towards the end of the card, I'm gonna make sure to fill in the bottom so that it's not stark white at the very bottom. Next up, we're gonna take out the peekaboo backdrop die. And I love this die so much because it's a great way to create lots of mini scenes. The other thing that's really great about it is that it's got these peekaboo windows. We're not going to use them today, but I really, really love that part of the die too. So here is what that die looks like. We're gonna go ahead and cut that out of some white cardstock and start to create mini scenes for this card. So the next thing, we've got our grass, or our sky, now we need our grass. So we're gonna die cut with a grassy hillside die, some white cardstock, and I'm gonna die cut two hills here. I wanted these hills to coordinate with the stenciled sky, so we're gonna use some ink on these as well. And we're gonna use celery stick and freshly cut grass. And the celery ink is gonna to go towards the bottom and then the freshly cut grass towards the top so that there's a nice kind of gradient effect. And so I'm just building that color on. I always like to start off of my die cut and then move on to it. And you can see as you add the darker color at the top, it really makes that grass stand out. Now for this bottom one, all we need to do is just add some tape runner along the bottom of the peekaboo backdrop. And I'm just kind of looking through, trying to line up the grass how I'd like it. And then I'm just gonna trim off the excess. I like to do it this way because I don't have to die cut it perfectly. And I always know I can just cut off extra. So I always cut it a little bit bigger than what I think I'm gonna need so that I can place it in the perfect placement. The top windows don't line up, so I'm gonna have to cut that grass in half. So I just made a little pencil mark as a guide and just trimmed that off. And then we're gonna do the same exact thing on these windows. We're gonna add some tape runner to the back of the backdrop and then kind of layer it over the grass in the perfect way. And once we've got that placement, we can stick it on and just trim off the excess. And then we'll repeat the same thing for the last window. Next up, we're gonna add tape runner to the entire back of this thing, including the grass pieces and that frame. And then we can layer it on that awesome cloudy sky. And I mean, oh my goodness, how cute is this? Like I wanna make a million cards with this with every stamp set because they're the perfect little scenes to put critters in. So now that I've got those all laid down, I loved how Elena used one of these Nouveau drop things and she added little white dots all over the place. And it's so subtle, but it had so much detail and it was really quick and easy to do. It's another fun thing that I. I really wanna try on all my cards too because look how pretty that looks over top of that cool cloudy backdrop. So now we're gonna take out images stamped and colored from this Happy Hug set. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? I love that the thought bubbles are colored in pink, so it's just kind of a little different. You can really have a lot of fun with how you color those thought bubbles in. We're gonna bring a little butterfly from Butterfly Kisses, and then we're gonna add some foam squares to the back of all of these images. We've also got the stamp set Long Distance Hugs. That's a great companion to this Happy Hug stamp set. So I stamped and die cut the word hugs, and then we have I Miss Your stamped on a banner. You'll see I'm gonna change that banner just a little bit. It ended up being too big, but but it's it's good for right now. So right now we can start adding in the characters to the scene. So we're going to layer the fox and the bunny. We have that little squirrel kind of looking up thinking, and he's going to think of those other squirrels hugging there. Then we're going to add the little mice to the tiny top window, which I think is perfect. A little butterfly to kind of help connect those scenes. I love how the pieces are overlaying parts of the backdrop. I think that really kind of makes it special. It has, gives it kind of a comic book feel. And then now we're gonna layer, of course, the little bird thinking about the birds hugging, which is so cute. And now we'll add some tape runner to that die cut word hugs from the long distance hug stamp set. And we can attach that right to the thought, top of that thought bubble. And I think that's a really cute look. It really gives some cool dimension. Now right here is when I thought, oh gosh, this, this banner just doesn't really work. So I'm gonna take that same banner die and we're just gonna use it to perfectly cut the end. So I'm lining it up, making it a shorter banner. Now you can see I have one end cut and I'm just gonna flip it over and line it up again. And this is a great way to create a custom length banner. So we'll just line that up with the end, hold it in place with some low tack tape, run it through the die cut machine. And now that banner is the perfect size. So we'll add some tape runner and we can layer that right there to complete the sentiment. 
the last step is to add this to a card base. So we have a standard size card base at five and a half by four and a quarter. I always like when the fold's at the top. We're gonna add some tape runner to that card base and then we can layer this whole panel on top. And I love how cute and sweet this card is. I love that we got to use so many images from the set because we created tiny scenes in each of the peekaboo backdrop windows. So thank you so much for this gorgeous card, Elena. Next up, Shari is going to create a super cute reveal wheel card and a rainbow stenciled card that is so cool. You guys have to check it out. So take it away, Shari. On this card, I'm going to use the new reveal wheel thought bubble add-on. You get the little puzzle piece and two frames. But the other cool thing about this is that it coordinates with the happy hugs thought bubble that comes in that stamp set as well. So you kind of get three different options. For this one, I'm going to use the stamped out image. I'm using the die that cuts out the center and then there's this die that lines up with the outside. So you're going to get this really thin frame around that stamped bubble. This allows you to cut out the center if you want or you could stamp a sentiment in it if you were just doing a regular card. So that is what that frame looks like and then the two frames that come with the add-on you get this cute little stitch frame as well as a plain frame to go around that thought bubble. All three of these coordinate with the thought bubble opening that goes in the reveal wheel. So I've got my little squirrel from the Happy Hug stamp set that's thinking. He's going to be thinking of you. And I'm going to cut my reveal wheel panel. I'm just going to pop that thought bubble add-on into that puzzle piece. I'm making a square reveal wheel. I'm going to cut that out of some perfectly plaid paper. I like this blue paper. It's kind of like the sky, but you get that fun pattern to the sky. I've also cut my wheel from some white cardstock as well as the little wheel that goes on the back for us to assemble our reveal wheel. But before I do that, I need to do my stamping on my reveal wheel. So of course there is a reveal wheel thought bubble template as well. You get three openings that fit with that bubble. The one thing I will say is make sure that you use the right side because if it's flipped over the wrong way, that bubble doesn't line up. So just a little tip there to make sure you're using the right side of the template. I'm going to be stamping out the three different versions of the word you that come with the stamp set. So it says thinking of you, you, you. <laughs> That's kind of how I think of it when I stamp it. I'm actually going to stamp each of them in a different color as well. So we get the fun variation of a different font as well as a different color. So I'm just going to take my template and turn it each time as I stamp out the different stamps of the word you. So I stamped the first one in some wild rose ink. This one I'm stamping in peacock. And then the third one I'm going to stamp in some sugar plum. So we have three fun colors and we also have three fun fonts to create our sentiment that's going to move around in that reveal wheel. So I'm going to go ahead and attach my reveal wheel to the background. I'm going to put that brad through the small wheel as well as the big one and I'm leaving my stencil on or my template on as a guide and you're going to see why here in a minute. You want to put three foam squares on the back of that small wheel and I use my template as a way to line up my window. You can still shift the reveal wheel till you see the score lines but for me on white sometimes that's hard to see. So I'm just using my template as a guide and I'll pop that off here in a minute. I'm gonna pull off the liner paper on those three little foam squares and I'm attaching this to a reveal wheel square cut from some purple watercolor wishes. So now that that's on there, I can just close that brad, pull off that template and then open that brad back up and hold that wheel in place. Now the reason why I use some purple watercolor wishes for the back piece of this reveal wheel is because I'm going to use that same pattern paper for the background of my card. So I'm just adhering this down to a card base and then that background is going to disappear when I put it all together. But first I need to give my little squirrel a place to sit. So I'm going to use some green watercolor wishes paper and cut the bottom of that reveal wheel square with the die so that it has that nice stitching that matches. And I can cut my grass from this piece. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead 
and put my reveal wheel stamped thought bubble that I made before and you can see how that perfectly lines up with that thought bubble opening that's cut in this piece of paper. And the reason why I'm doing that is so I know where my squirrel's going to be because you know I want those little bubbles that are coming up from his head to line up in the right place. So I can just pop him on there see where he's going to fall and now I can cut the grass. Now this grass is part of the mushroom border die set because I'm going to put some mushrooms behind him as well. So now that I've got that in place, I can just cut that and I know my grass is the right height for my little squirrel to sit on it. Now for the mushrooms, I wasn't quite sure where I wanted them to fall. So I cut them wider and taller than I need them to be. I'm going to tape my little squirrel here in place just to hold him in place. And then I can layer this on top, kind of move it around until I figure out where I want these mushrooms. Because I wanted a lot of mushrooms. I didn't want... My squirrel to cover up all the mushrooms and I wanted the mushrooms to kind of go off the side of the square. So what I'm going to do now that I've kind of figured out where I want it to be by kind of moving it around, I'm going to put some liquid glue on the back. Make sure I've got all the edges with glue and then I can place it and it's going to be wonky looking. You know, he's going to kind of be to the side and crooked looking. But then I'm going to trim off the extra and you're going to see how this works here. So I wanted him to fall between some mushrooms instead of covering them up. And so now that I've got it in place, I can just take my scissors and take that green piece of paper as my guide and trim this off to be the right size. I don't have to worry about any stitching details on this because it's hidden behind. So now I've got all my mushrooms and I can add the little caps to them. So I cut all their caps out of some pink watercolor wishes paper. And I just really like the colors of this card because I like those soft pink mushrooms. They just add some fun to the background where this little squirrel's going to sit. And you can see they kind of go past the edge of the square. So when I glue them on here, you're going to see they're going to overlap, which adds some more interest to the card as well. And that's not going to be a problem because there's actually a border around that square where the card base is. So I've just put some foam squares all around and I can just line these two squares up. This gives space for my reveal wheel to move in there. Make sure everything's working correctly. And then for the rest of the sentiment, I wanted it to just say thinking of and then the rest of the sentiment be in the bubble. So the you part is in the bubble. There's not a stamp in this set that just says thinking of by itself. So I'm going to do some selective inking. I've put a little piece of tape over the word you in this sentiment. And I'm just going to ink up the part that says thinking of. And then I'll just pull that tape off. So the word you didn't get any ink. And then I can line it up to one side of my banner here. And then I'll take the same die I used to cut the banner and I'll just shift it over so that I can cut the other side and make myself a little custom short banner. You can use the whole sentiment that says I can't stop thinking of you, but I just thought was this was a fun way to kind of change it up a little bit. I've put some liquid glue all over the back of my square reveal wheel that I created earlier and I'm just putting that onto the card base. And then my little squirrel, he's going to sit in the center and I'm going to put some foam squares on the back of him so he can be popped up in the foreground in front of those cute little mushrooms. And then I'm also going to do the same thing to this tiny little banner that I made. I'm putting some foam squares on the back of it and it's just going to be popped up as well. So it kind of is floating up there above that thought bubble. And then finally I need to add my little arrow which I've cut from some gray cardstock to show the recipient that if you turn the wheel something happens and then you can see here that it turns perfectly and you get all those fun different fonts of the word you. So I'm going to be making a slimline card and I'm going to take my happy hug stamp set and I'm going to combine it with the new scoot and buy stamp set as well as the little bunny from butterfly kisses. 
So I'm also gonna be using the new Thought Bubble stencil for this, and I'm gonna be stamping my images inside the stencil. I'm gonna be masking them off so that I can stencil some color, and then I will color them. So this is very much kind of like a one layer card. So I lined up my image where I want it to be inside the Thought Bubble in my Misty. I'm just gonna stamp it down in some jet black ink. Then I'm also going to stamp it onto some masking paper. So I didn't even re-ink it, so it's going to be very light. I'm going to cut out that masking paper with the coordinating die so that I have a little mask that I can put over my image. Since I'm using the die, it's actually going to leave a little white halo around my image. So my inking with my ink through the stencil is not gonna come directly up to the lines of my image. It's gonna have a little bit of a white reveal around it. So I've moved my panel over to my Make Art Station so I can use my magnets to hold everything in place. And I'm doing some ink blending with some spice marmalade for the top of this thought bubble. And then I'm gonna go in with some mustard seed for the bottom. So I'm gonna kinda use rainbow colors across this card from the top to the bottom. You'll see each of these bubbles is gonna be a little bit different. And I'm also using some post-its to kind of mask off those little trails of bubbles so I don't accidentally hit one of those with my blending brush and get some ink where I don't want it to be. So that was, oh, it was not spice marmalade, excuse me, it was carved pumpkin. And now I'm going in with mustard seed for that really bright yellow. And I'll just go back and forth between the two till I get a nice blend and you can peel that off and you have that really bright fun thought bubble. So I need to do the little trail of bubbles as well. I'm going to use the same two inks. A little bit of orange towards the top and a little bit of the yellow towards the bottom. And then you get that cute little thought bubble trail coming down from that one. So I'm using the smallest Thought bubble in the stencil for the top up here and I'm going in with some picked raspberries so you get that pink and I like how these two overlap and you get a different color there where the two bubbles overlap and then I'm going to use the small trail of bubbles so it looks like these two critters that are hugging are the ones having the thought that's going to be at the top so I'm just going to use that same pink and you're going to get a really cool look where the inks overlap and then this is where my sentiment is going to go that says, thinking of you. So when I pull off that mask I created, you can see that my stamped image is nice and clean. And I will color this with Copic markers after I get all my stencil and ink blending done. Now for the other two bubbles, the critters that I'm going to stamp in there, like this little bunny from Scooting By, they're going to get cut off at the bottom of the bubble so that only the top half is in the bubble. So I'm using the stencil not only as a placement but as a mask. So when I stamp my rabbit down, the bottom half of them is going to get masked by that stencil. Now I've wiped it off and I've kind of made a hinge with my tape here so that that bubble ends up in the same spot every time. And then I've stamped and cut out a mask from masking paper. I'm going to cover him up. I'm going to fold my stencil back over, mask off all the parts where I don't want to accidentally get my ink, hold it in place with my magnets, and now I can ink blend this bubble. So this one is actually at the bottom. So I'm going to do purple at the bottom and blue at the top. And I stamped out this one at the bottom so I could get the placement of the image that's going to be between these two bubbles that I've already inked. I didn't want things to end up too far, too close to the bottom because I need space for my little bunny that's going to be thinking all these happy thoughts. So I've used Wilted Violet for the purple and I'm using Salty Ocean for the blue. And then of course I'm going to peel this off and then you can see that fun thought bubble. I need to add my little trailing bubbles that go down to who is ever is having the fun thoughts and then I can move on to my third one so I did the same process here lined it up where I wanted it stamped my fox through it so that it masked off the bottom half created a mask with that masking paper 
and put that over my stamped image. And then now I'm going to ink blend through that stencil and give him a thought bubble around him as well. So for this one, I'm doing green along the bottom and then I'll pull in some yellow at the top. And then of course I need to do that little trail of bubbles at the bottom. And then this is all that ink blending through that stencil. So now I can color. I've removed all my masks from my stamped critters. And since I stamped in some jet black ink, I can just go in with my Copics and color them. And I'm making sure to complete the bottom shape of these thought bubbles with my coloring at the bottom. So you can see there, I have kind of have the little peak or the little indent of the cloud in my coloring at the bottom of the rabbit. And I'm just using some really pale browns for the rabbit and a really pale pink for his ear and his nose. And also some on his belly and I'm gonna leave his tail white. You kinda need to color the belly, you can't leave it white if you don't, you know, you need to define the bottom of that bubble. So you can see I'm doing the same thing here with the fox, kind of mimicking that shape with my coloring of that thought bubble so that it completes the shape. So I'm just using some darker browns for my fox here and you can see I already colored his belly and his face with a really pale brown and of course for that image at the top I'm using the same colors. So I need to create the ground at the bottom for my little butterfly kisses bunny to sit on and since I have this sort of one layer really flat card I decided I wanted to stencil the ground as well versus using a die cut piece of cardstock. So I've got out my simple hillside stencil and I'm using some hickory smoke distressing for the ground. And then just to kind of give it a little more color I'm going in with tumble glass which is very lightly with the brush and I'm just putting a little bit of that around the edges. It just defines the edges and kind of tones down that bright white a little bit. I just think that it really helps. It actually makes the colors pop. I'm mounting this to a card base cut from some peacock cardstock and you get that nice little border around it because I cut my panel down to be a half inch shorter so you get that eighth inch border all around the edges. And finally, I'm going to put my little butterfly kisses bunny at the bottom who's thinking about running to his fox friend and getting a hug. I'm going to fill in with some little hearts cut from some guava and raspberry cardstock. And then here is my finished card and I just love all those colors and that stenciling is just so cute. Thank you so much for creating these gorgeous cards, Shari. That rainbow stencil is just so beautiful, and this reveal wheel is so cute, and I love those pink mushrooms so much. Next up, we have some gorgeous cards by the design team. First up, we have this beautiful card by Elena that inspired me to make mine today. This card by Audrey is so cute. I love how the squirrel is on the pile of acorns, and he's thinking of his buddies hugging. It's so sweet how those little squirrels fit perfectly in that thought bubble. I absolutely love this happy rainbowy card by Grace. It's so cute and sweet and I love that the thought bubble she stamped other sentiments in there like way to go and you did it so happy for you. It's so fun and adorable. This card here by Megan is so sweet. I love these center picture window cards. So as you open up this card then you can see this really cool three-dimensional design with those cute little characters hugging. I love that she used the fox from Butterfly Kisses on the front. I just love this card by Lynette and how she's created cute little tiny scenes into those squares. Absolutely adorable and so awesome. And this card by Tammy is so sweet. I love how she used our scripty hugs die to go along with this stanza. It's a perfect match. This card by Lynette is adorable. She used a brand new thought bubble die that we're going to be showing you guys later on in the week. And then here Elise got super creative and created a thought bubble card just with the stencil and some really cute sentiments. I love this card so much. Letitia's square stenciled scene is so cute. I love those hearts in the background too and the little characters off to the side hugging. And then this card by Maureen is gorgeous. I love how she combined a lot of our different squirrel sets all together to make this really cool slimline card. 
We cannot wait to see what you guys create with Happy Hugs and all of the cool Thought Bubble products. They are gonna be so amazing and I just can't wait to see them. So thank you guys so much for watching today and I hope you have an absolutely amazing day. Bye.